we're looking at the Pinebook Pro, and I've got the ANSI edition. That means that it has a US keyboard layout, and there is also the ISO edition available for you at pine64.org. So make sure as you're checking out that you that you select the one that is the keyboard layout that you want. If you're in Canada and the US, you probably want the US keyboard layout, and that is called ANSI, A-N-S-I. So I want to take a quick boo before we get into the news tonight okay. at the actual interface. The EMMC comes with Debian Stretch pre-installed. And now, while I'm not booting from the EMMC because I, I wanted to, to really experience kind of different distros and things, so I installed that same distro downloadable off of their website onto a micro SD card. Okay. And here we go. So this is uh, what it looks like. So what I'm going to do, uh, I just want to make sure, actually, I'm going to share the same, I'm going to set the same screen so that you guys can see what I see. Let's oh, have you got it on dual screen? Uh, it's on dual screen. So I'm going to instead set this to mirror. So what I'm seeing on my screen is I'm going to drag this over for you so that you can see because it's actually operating as two monitors. Oh, nice. Okay. So on my screen here, I'm going to check that checkbox that set. So this is over USB-C. So it actually has a video output, and I've selected to show the same thing on both screens. So uh, presumably if I hit apply, this is really awkward because that screen is actually... <laughs> Not a real screen. There we go. Okay, so keep this configuration, and now we can both see the exact same screen. So you and I are looking at the same screen here. So that's USB-C output, and that's important to note, and I wanted you to see that because if you plug that USB-C into like the HDMI of your TV, you'll be like, well, why is it not showing the same thing? Mm -hmm. You need to bring up the display, the monitor preferences, and select that you want it to be the same so image the on all monitors. So that the default setting to have the dual screen? It will put it on two different screens. So that is dual. So it is a dual screen the setup, default. yeah. Cool. So all I've done is I've bought for six bucks off of Amazon just a USB-C to HDMI adapter. Yep. It's just a cable. It's really, really cheap, cheerful, and it makes it work. So as you can see, um, um, I'm able to stream live the the screen just as I see it, and it's working absolutely flawlessly. So this is the default de facto distro, and this is Debian Stretch and has basically everything that you need to get up and going. So let's see what we've got. So under accessories, I've got LeafPad text editor, uh, Vim text, and text editor for you hackers out there, uh, graphics. It comes with uh, not a whole lot, actually. We probably want to install the GNU image manipulation program. We've talked yep. about that on the show. Uh, internet. We've got Chromium and Firefox. Very nice. Because apparently you need both. <laughs> um, HexChat will get you into IRC. Office. Let's see what we have. LibreOffice. Perfect. So you've got your that's basic... That's everything you need. Yeah, that's like Writer and so Microsoft Office equivalent for Linux. Uh, sound and video. We've got... Oh, now I installed Cheese because I, I wanted to point out that we actually have a built-in uh, webcam on this system. So this is a 1080p webcam. And even though with Cheese booted here, so this is going to presumably... There we go. You can see that the, the frame rate is really, really poor right right oh, there are you in doing cheese. the robot i am i'm, a, I'm really good at the robot <laughs> but but it it does work really quite well and the picture looks pretty good uh let's take a quick why don't now, we is that just a setting as to why it's so low well i don't know yeah <laughs> i think what we're gonna find is that with something like the pine book pro and i think this is important to note and maybe this is something i should have mentioned right off the top what it is, this is, let's consider it experimental. Mm -hmm. Let's consider this something that is bleeding edge and mind blowing. Yeah. Let's say if you are a Linux lover, if you love to tinker, this might be a notebook for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you're probably going to run into little issues like that. Did you see the countdown? One, two, three, two, one. And it was like all gibberish. So there's something wrong there. And I'm going to probably have to figure that out if I, if I care. But see, um, I kind of thought it was a cool feature. It looked like a flash. <laughs> there you go. It's like three, two, one to prepare. And that's like screen flash. It's like, oh, okay, cool. But it didn't really look like a three, did it? It was like gibberish. But it kind of reminds me of like the first ever episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sasha. That's exactly what this looks like. Um, but it, I mean, there is a webcam. Yep. Yes. Big deal. Yeah. So there's, there's a community that 
is involved in all Pine64 products. And mm-hmm. that's a big part of this, is that you can get into the community and say, hey, my webcam seems a little bit choppy, or maybe the cheese is having some weird issues. Well, you can get into the, the chat, the, the the, and that's on IRC through HexChat, or you can get into the forums and talk to them about that and, and get some help. Uh, we've got media players. We've got uh, your standard kind of Linux system tools. Um, speaking of, let's bring up like system monitor and let's just kind of see what this looks like. Hold on for a second. So this is a $200 Linux notebook computer that's this thin, That's a, a that has no moving parts. So if I can, I don't know if you can really get your head around that at home, but when this is sitting on my lap, there's no fan noise. Yep. There's very little heat, and a little bit of heat off of the mm-hmm. one side where the SOC is. That's the system on chip, the C, what we would call a CPU. Yep. Uh, there's a little bit of heat there, but it's dissipated quite well. Um, but really, like, there's no noise coming off of no, it. No, there's whatsoever. none whatsoever. So you don't have any of those moving parts that you do on a normal traditional laptop. So what have I been using this for? Well, it's not a super powerful laptop, but it's quite good as far as no, I mean, getting a on the internet. It's a it's a single board computer built into a laptop yeah. chassis essentially, but. It's got a great keyboard now. It's got a nice touchpad. You've got to update the touchpad uh, firmware. Make sure you do that right out the gate. There's some updates that you need to install. You'll find out more about that in the Pine64 forums. Mm -hmm. Very, very important for for the sensitivity and and accuracy of that. Um, But we've got 4 gigs of RAM. And what I've been using this for is I use it as a terminal for my main computers. So okay. if you understand, that's already how I work. Mm-hmm. I don't like to carry a big workstation of a laptop. They call it a portable workstation. I used to do that. I used to buy the the $1,700 portable workstation that I would do my video production on. And it was this thick and it had big honking fans in it. Or you might have like one of those big Republica gamer laptops that are right. like this, you know, the same thing because you want all that power. The way I work now as a video producer is I have a honking server. That honking server has all the power in the world that I'll ever need. Right. And then I use any terminal to be able to connect into it and bring up its screen. So on this $200 notebook computer that weighs a feather weight, mm-hmm. I'm sitting in a coffee shop on their Wi-Fi, VPNed into my studio, and I'm doing video editing on my screen on uh, a $7,000 uh, production system. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So this becomes a terminal. So it's brilliant for that. It's proven itself to be brilliant for that. But at the same time, it's also great without that capability to just use it as web surfing, use it for for your standard, like everything's online these yeah. days. If you're using um, Google Drive, you probably yep. have a lot of your stuff just right in there. So let's get a quick boo at this system itself because i mean the the real question is okay if i'm not using it connected to a big powerful system is it still going to work as a a pretty decent computer one of the things that you're going to notice is down here at the bottom right it's jumping around between 408 megahertz to 1.42 gigahertz and so on it's jumping all over the place because it's selecting the processor frequency based on my usage. So it's right. getting faster and it's giving more power, taking more juice from the 10,000 milliamp hour battery mm-hmm. uh, based on my requirements. Right. But if I'm not really doing much, if it's idling, it'll just clock itself down to 408 megahertz, which is going to use very, very little power. Yeah, exactly. Presumably. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to cancel out of that guy and let's jump onto YouTube because that's probably, you know, I don't know about you. But if things are not playing well on YouTube, then that's a real, that's a write off for me. I want videos on YouTube to work really, really well. Right. That's a key thing. Uh, so fairly quick. Uh, yeah, loads okay. So, um, I mean, everything looks good and I'm just doing this with the touchpad. So I'm doing multi touch right now. So as I scroll, I'm using two fingers to scroll. Mm hmm. That's how I do it. So, and you can, if you want, you can go over to the scroll bar and click and pull down. But I like to just use multi touch. Uh, it's just a little bit quicker. So, if I wanted to click on any of these videos, so let's go to something that's fairly current. Let's go to our ESET video here. And there's an ad that's playing. So, it jumped up real quick. That's Looks very really quick. good, real smooth. And skip the ads. 
It's switched to 18 over 9. How do you like that? Oh, it looks like I've already clicked on this video. So let's reverse. Again, using multi-touch to rewind there. I double tapped on the scroll bar and then can scroll. There you go. Um, looks a little... Yeah. Let's full screen it. See if it cacks out. No, looks good. Everything's looking pretty good there. So sound is a little bit tinny, as you can expect from a lap, like a, a, a low uh, priced laptop. But I want to be clear when I, when I say that, that it, it has Bluetooth 5. Mm -hmm. Okay. Think about that for a second. So you've got a Bluetooth speaker externally and you can, you can connect this to your Bluetooth speaker. And then or those Bluetooth good. headphones. Bluetooth that we headphones. A weeks Bluetooth ago. headphones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so those speakers that are a little bit tinny. You saw them when I unbox uh, when I opened it up. Just a little little tiny speakers. You can either use the headphone jack. There is that uh, over here, or you can use Bluetooth headphones, Bluetooth speakers, and you're going to get much better sound as well. Very cool. Um, so that's really really neat. Neat. Um, I have to say, two hundred bucks. Well worth it's, it. Oh, well worth it. Oh, it's been a dream. Like, just like I've been using a, I've been using a Lenovo ThinkPad, yep. and it's beautiful. But mm -hmm. it is, it's big and heavy, mm -hmm. clunky, and and it's a nice notebook. But it it feels heavy on my lap, and this thing just feels like a feather. Like it's just there's nothing to it. It's so thin. It's so lightweight, and just and the battery lasts. It seems forever. And, you, um, and, and I just love using it. It's not so expensive that you would be like so anxious if you take it somewhere. You, no, you would, not right. at all. Yeah, you could you well, could take it and tinker. I mean, yeah, I, I'm looking yeah. at this and I'm going, you know what? Our oldest son is going into high school next year. Oh yes, mm -hmm. this would be a great computer for him. Brilliant. Yes, for schooling. Sure. Yeah. If if he can if, see the thing with education, and it's a sad place right now in the Canadian education system, is that they don't teach. Um, skills. They teach software. That's true. And so when you go to school, when you pay to go to college, you're paying to learn Microsoft Office. That is yeah. true. Actually. Not the skill sets. The, so so yes. to translate that from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice can be a challenge. So yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you that one little caveat. Um, and, it's, and that is a problem. Uh, but that's a problem in the education sector. Right. That's not a problem with this device. Um, and I think if we have a good troubleshooting mind and and maybe a, a father who is willing to take the time to to help their son and and show mm -hmm. them, OK, well, yeah, in, in Microsoft Word, it's like that. But in LibreOffice, it's like this. It's well, similar. It's very, very close, but it's a little bit different. But see, uh, we have a dual boot system. Yeah. Both Linux and Windows. Yeah. And on Windows, I also have um, Microsoft Office and um Libre. Office. Okay. Yep. So they use both, but for a lot of their school, it's all on Google Docs. That's true. So they're yes. writing Google Docs anyway, so Brilliant. it doesn't matter to them. So this is like, so consider this like, so you say 200 bucks. Oh, well, that's about the price of a good high-end Chromebook. Yeah. Right? But this is full Linux. Yeah. I installed Debian Linux on this. You can install Manjaro or Ubuntu, and it's the full operating system. Anything that's in Synaptic Package Manager, I installed Cheese. I mentioned wanting to install um, uh, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, right? So what am I going to do? It's just like you would on your, on your Linux machine. Mm -hmm. Bring up Synaptic Package Manager. That's w where I am on, on Debian anyways. Um, and do a search and type in GIMP. And guess what we're gonna find? No guesses? <laughs> GIMP. There it Look is. Nice. Right? So I can just install it just because it's Linux. It's not a Chromebook. Right. So it's like the price of a Chromebook, a, a good high end one, but it's full Linux. And I love, love that. But do keep in mind there are some like development caveats sure. so you've got to be willing to work those out yep. right now there are a little bit of things that are like for a novice user might drive them nuts for someone like myself Good i years. love it and yeah. i can forgive those things yep. um things like um if i close the lid right now and it goes to sleep and i open it and push the power button it won't wake up well that's a problem they're working on it it'll be yeah. fixed but right now i just know don't close the lid <laughs> Exactly. It boots. It boots so darn fast Very that quick. if I shut it down and turn it back on again, I don't. I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't affect me. But you. So you learn these little quirks about it. 
because it is a very new system and it's a very new, uh, it's a, an entirely new realm for Linux notebooks. Mm. I mean, this is an SOC, a single board computer built into a beautiful laptop chassis and you've got access to, to a full Debian or, or any uh, compatible Linux distro that on that awesome. system. How cool is that? Now, for somebody who's going, hey, I'd be open to this. Yeah. But what happens if I mess something up? Well, then like, just wipe your SD card and re and exactly. reflash. Exactly. Un- yeah. it up. Like sure. that's the great part. I mean, if you're doing something on your Windows machine and you mess it up, it's like, oh my goodness, now I like, <laughs> reinstall. Oh. No, but reflash. This, it takes yeah, four re- minutes, which is amazing. <laughs> totally awesome. Yeah. Now, because this has the extra micro, micro SD for booting. Yeah. Um, could you put say like RetroPie on that micro SD and boot up RetroPie? That is a great question. On a, on a micro SD. Well, you'd have to have a, a Rock 64, Pinebook 64 compatible version of RetroPie. So yeah. what you would need to do, I think, would be instead to take the approach of installing Debian and then installing RetroPie on top of that. Okay, So it's enough. a little bit different. I don't think there's anyone doing a RetroPie gaming system for the Rock, uh, for the Pinebook Pro yet. Okay. Um, but I'm not entirely certain of that. It's just a distro. It's a, yeah. it's a Debian based or Ubuntu based distro. Um, so it could be done. Yeah. It's just, I don't know if anyone's doing it right Ameritroid now. Ameritroid said that there is an update. PBP, um, was updated so that when he closes his lid, wait a bit, reopen it, push yeah. the, bu- the power button and it works fine. So oh, yeah. there you go. you just need an update. Nice. Yeah, okay. probably. As I say, people are like it's folks good. in the community are working on it. Yes. And you can jump into the chat, um, the the forum, and they'll tell you all about where, where it's at. Um, I've had a, a strange thing where it reboots once in a while, but I found if I if I hard set the frequency of the CPU, mm-hmm. it doesn't do it anymore. Oh. And we've seen tonight that it didn't do it as as well. And I didn't change that setting. So I think one of the updates have just simply fixed that. Now, you know what would be interesting and let me know if this is slightly off base. Okay. To take the Rock Pro 64. That's the single board computer version. That, of this. Yeah. And run a giggle score against this. And see if this compares. Yeah. Uh, they should be. They're the same SOC. They're the same RAM. Right. But just because there's a few other components added in, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. Mm. Right. Mm. Yeah, we could do that. Sure. I think that'd be Why interesting. Not? Just yeah. for fun. Anybody in the community want to do that? Give it a go. Run a giggle score on a Pinebook Pro. Um, we are this week. We've looked at the ANSI keyboard edition, and while the ISO version came out late 2019, the ANSI version just came out in uh, early 2020. And so this is like the brand new creme de la creme for uh, American and Canadian users. So and uh, I'm very, very pleased with it. Very impressed. And this could be a daily driver. Absolutely. Especially oh, because sure. the video production I can do with a remote connection to my main server, yeah. which has Windows 10 and, and my video production suite, which is uh, DaVinci Resolve. So, um, so this is like, this is a brilliant little terminal for mm-hmm. me. Yeah. So check it out, pine64.org.